So picking ideas is, is where these two things meet, context and problem. And context, the, the, the inner circle is very much your side of it. It's your experience, your passions, your interests. What, what can you bring to it to do that? And, and all of that helps you understand a customer's problem innately. If you've been that customer or if you've worked for years in that space, you'll understand what their problems are and the nuances of where they keep stubbing their toes a lot better than somebody outside of that. So context is really important in, in, in finding something within your context, which is your passion, the experience, and the environment. You are in Johannesburg in South Africa. What about that makes it different? What gives you a different focus or angle or experience or access to a different market or, or scale or channel that, that you wouldn't get elsewhere? And yeah, just to add to that, one of, those, one of the pieces of advice you'll often hear is, can you solve a problem that's yours? Because if you're solving your own problem, your customer development is a bit easier because your first customer you understand quite well. Yeah. I, I believe the phrase is scratching your own itch. I'm not saying you're a goat. Um, and, and then on the other side, you have, you have the problem. And so when you're looking at the problem, is you're looking around the environment, you're looking through the experience that you've got, that you look at the value stream is just a process of how things happen. What are the sequence of events that people move through, that companies move through? What are the things that happen in that process? And you zoom in and zoom out of that process. So if you're looking at the process of... Uh, Taxi. A taxi. So Uber. Uber is a great example. I just keep plugging on. But um, so if, if you're looking at, at, at Uber, you can either zoom in on how do we change one step in that value stream? How do we remove the payment step from taxis? Great. Make you add your credit card beforehand. When the taxi is over, you just walk out. There's no more haggling with cash. They've actually removed the step from the value stream completely. Um, and, and, and or you can zoom completely out and say, how do we change the way, how do we make it so that you never need a taxi? Maybe we have cars just driving around the street that you can summon, that you don't pay for. You pay a monthly subscription and there's a car whenever you need it. Uh, so by, by zooming into value streams and zooming out of value streams is how you can start looking at what are the factors that play with that and, and what you're really trying to find is a disruption. And so a disruption comes in one of three ways. Um, when you're looking at a value stream in the value stream map, it's about reordering the steps in a value stream, removing the steps in a value stream, or changing the way that funds are extracted from that value stream. And so as you're starting to work through the value streams, those are the questions and the angles you want to be looking at that. It comes, again. It, it comes up again a little later, so I'm not going to dig too deep into it now. Um, but if you look at Uber, Uber removed, or they changed the way payment is extracted by removing it completely. So you, you don't pay for an Uber cab anymore. There's no action that you do for paying for a cab. It just happens. The, the, the other steps that they changed is of reordering. When you used to order a cab, you go into the street corner, hail a cab, and wait in the rain. Now, you hail the cab, and then go into the street corner. So they've changed the order of value stream in that. And so those are where those disruptions come. They've changed the way that they, on their supply, that's on the customer side, on their supply side, by not owning drivers, they fundamentally shifted that whole value stream of how you supply that and create a fleet and all that sort of thing. And so those are, that's where, you, where you're really looking for problems, is intersecting where your context and your experiences um, and looking through the value streams around you and that you've worked, worked with and how can you shuffle, change, zoom in on one step, zoom out to, a, to, a, to the whole value stream, and how can you change the transportation system, and, or how can you just change payments and caps? And zooming in and zooming out doesn't stop at that idea stage. When you take an MVP to market and it's like, oh, well, people don't really want this bit because that bit sucks. You might have to zoom out and do the bit before to help them with that. Um, so that yeah, so, so as, as you're running these lean experiments, you're looking for you're looking for the, the biggest customer problem. And there's a great analogy of, of, of climbing the wrong hill, um, where you, you, you're climbing this hill and you're going and you've got this customer's problem and you're solving their problem and you, you're getting it. And as you get to the top of the hill, you look to your right and there's a massive mountain. You're like, wow, I could have been at the top of that one by now. Right. Um, you could have been at base camp. Or you could, have been, you could have been halfway up that massive mountain that's infinitely more valuable to where you are. So, so climbing, you've got to make sure you're climbing the right hill. And that's what you do by zooming out to say, Am I solving the biggest problem for the customer right now? Um, David's got a great example where 
He went into, he was looking at a grocery product for townships, where he went into um, going into townships and they did a walkabout. How about you? So, so we, one of the ways we actually get to customers, especially taking people who are sitting in air conditioned environments um, and, and in corporates, is we do it into the shack tour. So we'll actually go into um, Burkhana Township in Cape Town and do like a walk down the road and go to the sponsor shop and speak to some local people. So I had this idea, which is close to my heart, called Whole Foods, about like a monthly subscription to Whole Foods designed by a nutritionist so that uh, people at the base of the pyramid can have access to to whole food, wholesome food for the month and not be doing impulse purchases and getting exploited. And I thought this was a really amazing idea. So I went out and I spoke to these three ladies who, my first amazing thing is they all, they're all unemployed, but all of them are in business. Why don't they bought this whole search one? So I, I, I learned something about these two ladies because I wanted to chat to unemployed people who ran households, understand how they do food. So then I was walking along and I was like, okay, customer development, I don't want to mention my product yet, so now I want to understand your problem. So I said, okay, so what is your biggest problem and with uh, Max who runs the tour with us, how much months later in the business? So what, what do you hope for at the moment? Uh, and I'm assuming Maslow's hierarchy of needs for food. I'm going to get there and like, that we have enough food. I said that the war will be over and that people won't steal my house while I'm away. I was talking to the wrong people. <laughs> 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 there, there was conflict in Marikana Township at that point. People had been chased out of their houses. They were all staying in temporary houses. And while they were away, people were going in, taking apart their zozo, stealing them and breaking something. Uh, customer development, those are the wrong people to talk to about food. Instead, we had a conversation about how that went down, uh, what was happening there, connected a few things. So it helped a little bit with that problem, but it, it's, you've got to be prepared and really be inquisitive and not go, okay, okay, that's cool. <laughs> you know, you're not in the house. Maybe talk to me about food. Um, again, it was a Kind of youngish crowd, so I might be on the money here. Who watched the Animaniacs as a kid? Animaniacs. Yeah, yeah, okay, sing the song. <laughs> 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 the one of the ones that expect the unexpected. Really? Who would bug me as a kid? How do you expect the unexpected? But what you need to cultivate is this desire to find the unexpected. And, and the really interesting thing about the unexpected is. It's not in here. It's not in this room. It's not going to be on anything you write down today. It, to, to really interrogate a value stream or look at your problem, the answers aren't in your head. You're going to assume that they want whole foods and they're actually more concerned about their shacks getting dismantled and taken away. And, and you only get that by getting out of the building. <coughs> Going outside, talking to people, experiencing your customer's problem, in their environment, understanding your customer in a really intimate way is how you find things worth building, how you find products, how you find real problems worth solving. And that's the, the, the real crux, is, is getting out there and expecting the unexpected. Everyone thinks, you, you think you understand well enough until you go into the real world, and then it all changes. So things will change, your idea will change, you'll, you'll realize that it's fundamentally broken, you're climbing the wrong hill, and that's fine. That's the part of this discovery process, that's finding startups, it's testing things. Be willing to be unexpected, be willing to change your mind, and whenever you change your mind, you just look for data that proves you wrong, or look for data that proves you right. So, uh, uh, won't you be confused, maybe let's say uh, you tried selling food, and then they told you about the safety of their dwellings, and then, isn't that changing the whole idea that you had, and is that so? It's what that says to me is those are not customers. Oh, maybe I go find customers elsewhere, and we try other things. Also, maybe because they all have businesses, I should be looking at a different channel for this to empower individual business owners, small business owners who are unemployed people who could be channels for. There's lots of learnings that you can be prepared for in that space, but they were definitely not my customers at that point in time. That's the that's the, the learning from there, and. Expect the unexpected is the opposite of going out to prove your hypothesis. If you're going out to prove what you said, then you're not expecting the unexpected. If you're going out to disprove or find validated learning or kill your assumptions, that's what you have to do. Cool.
We're going to... There's a question there. We have a quick question. How do you test something that is very really intangible but is very really central to the value proposition? So two examples is Twitter, where people can be like session figures, right? A meme, where people can be very authentic. So the thing I don't understand is how do you go out to customers and get primary research to determine what these things are that you want in a very tangible element, which is essentially culture. And that is exactly what the session of the team is on, is on iteration design. 